know, Jared and I were talking about it. It's like, okay, they wanted to smear Florida. They wanted to smear our vaccination effort. They obviously wanted to smear me. They spent three months, and the best they could come up with is a half-baked conspiracy theory that literally is readily debunked uh, by talking to, like, two people. Yeah, we talked to one of those people, Palm Beach County Mayor Dave Kerner, earlier this week, and things aren't looking too bright for 60 Minutes right now. You saw Florida Governor Ron DeSantis there in the state cabinet room yesterday, accompanied by his emergency management director, Jared Moskowitz, who is a Democrat. The CBS governor firing back at CBS, uh, the governor firing back at CBS in 60 Minutes for their pay-to-play accusations in that vaccine story. Shortly after this press conference, a spokesperson confirmed that the governor had privately received a single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine last week. This is also new information. This according to several reports. Now, let's welcome in RNC Senior Communications Advisor for Black Media Affairs, Paris Denard. Also back with us, attorney and Republican strategist, Amanda Maki. Uh, and back with us again as well, Jack Brewer, retired NFL captain and CEO of the Brewer Group. Amanda, first to you on this one. How much are you enjoying uh, this? I don't want to call it a victory lap by Ron DeSantis, but, you know, I don't know, uh, off the top rope, a body slam, whatever you want to call it. How much are you enjoying this? Well, it's completely backfired on uh, 60 Minutes. I mean, this is a hatchet job. Why? Because Ron DeSantis is their biggest threat. He's their biggest threat in 2022. Uh, he'll be their biggest threat in 2024 if he chooses to run for president. Look, Jared Moskowitz came out and said, as a progressive, as you said, he's a Democrat. He's a progressive. His father's one of the biggest Democrat fundraisers in the state of Florida. He said that no one from the governor's office suggested uh, using Publix. The other thing that was a huge failure and just, again, lack of journalistic integrity was what Ron DeSantis said in that interview. He said CVS and Walgreens were our first line of defense. They were going into the long-term care facilities back in December, and it would have been uh, malpractice if a store like Publix with over a thousand stores, the majority of them in the state of Florida, where most Floridians go to get their flu shots every year, if they didn't use them uh, for the vaccinations. And here we are, if you're over 40, you can now get a vaccine in the state of Florida. So we're doing great. CBS has egg on their face. And uh, Ron DeSantis, once again, he does his homework and uh, he's shining bright. Yeah, Jack, there's a statement uh, from Ron DeSantis that he made at a news conference two days ago, and I'm loving this clip where he says, they know that we know that they are lying. And I, that's like a bumper sticker phrase. And also to, to kind of dovetail on what Amanda was saying here, there's a tweet from Jared Moskowitz re replying to the 60 Minutes response. They stood by their story, and he said, I did speak with 60 Minutes. I never said I didn't. They were very nice, but I told him that the public story was I can't say it. B.S., Jack. Uh, you know, we've seen the media in the past be very disingenuous in their coverage. They're called out for it right now. Jack, is anyone going to be held accountable? I don't know, but I know one thing. If, if we're playing a Super Bowl game against the cancel culture, I know that Ron DeSantis is our quarterback. He's our Tom Brady. Uh, I applaud his efforts, man. He has taken on uh, this cancel culture like no other. Uh, and, he, and they're starting to back off. And I think they will be held accountable this time. I think even a lot of liberals, a little, even folks that usually side with the cancel culture, culture are being awakened uh, by someone like Ron DeSantis. He is being relentless and he is not backing down. Uh, I think they will be held accountable, accountable, not just in the court of law, but also public opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I you know, if you look at what's going on right now, people are starting to see uh, and not want uh, to continue to be lied to uh, and, and, and follow behind these hypocrites right. uh, on the left. Jack, I know you've seen this firsthand because you and I have talked about your volunteer work during the pandemic, getting folks in underserved communities in Palm Beach and Broward County, things like masks and protective gear. These folks, unfortunately, don't have the resources to distribute this. The story was right. There are not Publixes in these places because those communities a lot of times can't support a Publix and Publix is not a charity. But what was your take on 60 Minutes' racial claims against Ron DeSantis. I mean, we just reported, I think, yesterday about CBS, the, the network, having to remove two top executives because of uh, claims of harassment and racial problems inside their network. And here they are accusing Ron DeSantis, basically, of a racist vaccine rollout. You know what? I, I think it's overplayed. Um, I, you know, 
honestly, man, I wish there were more Publix uh, in a lot of these yeah. food deserts, what we call them, because there are a lot of places around uh, Florida that just don't have access uh, to grocery. Uh, but to blame that on a on a public enterprise that's there to make money, it's really not their job. It's jobs uh, of people like myself and folks in the community to to step up and yeah. figure out a way to bring these resources into these communities. But I think they're taking too many swings at Ron DeSantis. I think Ron DeSantis, by keeping the economy open uh, in the black community, by fighting uh, for school choice. We have a program called Rise Up here in Florida, where every single underserved family uh, can qualify for almost $6,000 per year to send their kids uh, to private schools and in their, in their education. Most states don't have that. Mm -hmm. And so you're not going to knock Florida uh, without us conservatives, white, black, green, and purple of all colors standing up because we are doing a lot of things right. We can fix some things in our education system. We can improve some things in our in our criminal justice system. But overall, Ron DeSantis has done an amazing job, not just for blacks, but all, all Floridians. All right, let's talk to Paris. I want to talk about uh, Mike Pence now signing this multi-million dollar two-book deal with Simon & Schuster, making him one of the first alums from President Trump's inner circle to land that kind of contract. The first book will be out as an autobiography in 2023. Uh, no coincidence there about the timing of this. But Paris, what do you see uh, for the future of Mike Pence? I think that uh, former Vice President Mike Pence is an excellent example of someone who is continuing to advance the America First agenda. He served with President Trump, and President Trump led the nation in an unprecedented fashion. And now uh, the vice president, uh, Vice President Pence, is going to uh, articulate his thoughts in a book. This is what uh, people do. Uh, I don't think this is abnormal. I think this is actually normal. I look forward to uh, President Trump doing a book. I look forward to other uh, people in his cabinet doing books because the American people want to know what happened behind the scenes. They want to know more about uh, these uh, figures of, of, of great political stature. And so I think that we, we should want to hear from them and hear an accurate representation and depiction of what happened during the Trump administration, because what we've seen is that there's been a, dis, uh, uh, the, the media has just distorted the truth and distorted the record uh, on time and time again. The previous segment about 60 Minutes uh, is a classic example of how they're distorting the records of yet another Republican governor. Our Republican governors are leading, especially on the issue of COVID-19, and yet the media doesn't want to talk about the failures of Democrat governors, especially as it relates to COVID-19, looking at New York and places like uh, California. And so when you see uh, Vice President, former Vice President Pence writing this book, I hope he continues to articulate exactly what went on behind the scenes to advance this America First agenda that led to unprecedented prosperity, economic growth, and peace around the world, especially in the Middle East with the Abraham Accords. All right, we got one minute left here. Uh, Jack and Amanda, what, what do we think, thumbs up, thumbs down, about the, the prospects of a Mike Pence presidential run in 2024? I think he has no choice. Um, I mean, he has a choice, but I think, you know, he'll, he's a spirit-led man. The Holy Spirit will lead him there. Yeah. Uh, but right now, Hey, what Ron DeSantis is doing, it'd be hard for anybody to take that away unless President Trump steps back in. And if President Trump does run, Amanda, will Mike Pence be his running mate? I would say probably not. Um, I could see maybe a Christy Nome. Uh, I would see maybe maybe a woman uh, on the ticket, I think, would be would be really good. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Guys, stick around. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.